we're gonna wipe right down that panel line and that'll give me the shading I'm desiring on both sides. But you see what it does to the rivets now? Look at that, look how that makes that pop like that. Now, here's the other cool part. Get yourself some silver. Welcome back to Just Plain Crazy. I am Brendan. It is time to get the weathering this giant scale Seagull Model Zero that I picked up from Gator RC. The big debate, weather them now, weather them later. Well, I'd sooner get it done now because I know how I am. When I get it to the field, I just want to fly this thing. We've had a lot of time into this model and I'm super happy to see it get to this point, but uh, we're done with the build. We got the cockpit installed again from Dynamic Balsa. You guys can hop over on Facebook and check out Dynamic Balsa and Hobby. Look at that, you can even see the reflection of my just plain crazy neon sign in there from neonexposure.com. I absolutely love that thing. I love how it lights up in the background. I get a lot of comments. But anyway, we're here to do weathering. It is time to get into weathering. I'm gonna show you guys tons of cool tips, tricks, techniques that I use. And this thing is gonna be banging. And that's what I've been so excited about. This white zero, everyone's like, oh, it's gonna get dirty or you're gonna get fingerprints on it. You can see I've started to weather some of the decals and, and stuff before I put them on. But guys, it's a blank canvas. I don't worry about getting it dirty because we're going to make it nasty looking anyway. And that's going to be the joy of uh, weathering this plane is really we have a nice blank canvas to work with. So um, let's hop right into it. Let's get started. One of the things I wanted to do was to get a picture of the plane before I started weathering it put together. But as I go to fade these stickers, the red is going to bleed really bad into the white so i need to do it here before i apply them so that's what we're going to do so one of the things that i do is i get a um, piece of steel wool that's fine grade steel wool and then we will take some um, lacquer thinner just simply put some lacquer thinner on a rag and for example we'll do this lower circle i guess and i just wipe that over and you'll feel it, it pretty quickly starts to get tacky. And that fades the glossiness off of it. And then you can start to wipe with the steel wool in whatever direction you want. <clears throat> and you could see the amount of red that that already gave that thing. So it doesn't take long to do this, but obviously doing it on the on the plane is a bigger issue. And then I'll show you how we add some more effects to this stuff after after effects. So you can see, and it's nice because some of the rough garbage underneath on my bench will raise bumps where it takes the edges off, which is really cool. So let's get the rest done. When we go to install the decals, uh, the whole plane is going to get roughed up as we go. So um, before I apply the decals to take it out, we're just going to take some aggressive steel wool over that area. And that's just going to help it to adhere a little bit. And as I said, we're going to do this at a whole model anyway, because I'm going to weather the whole thing. Now I'm going to take again some isopropyl alcohol and we're going to make sure that Everything's nice and clean. And if you wanted to, you could go ahead and use the um, wet method to put, to put these on. That's going to be completely up to you. And now I go back over and you can just see that wiping up this decal leaves some residue here behind on the rag so that way we get all of that red that's bled cleaned off and then whatever which way you weathered it you want to make sure that you put that direction correct
I'll just do a little bit at a time here to prevent wrinkles or bubbles. bit of something was stuck in there we'll get that out all right and there's decal number one we got more to do let's go So I need to add some life to this. And the way we're gonna do it is I printed off some um, A6M2. So this is model 21, and that's what this plane is kind of replicated after. And you can see that I've printed these schematics, I found them online, and it shows you from every view and angle all of the panel lines involved. So this is what I'm using as a reference. I'm not gonna be die hard scale with this, but I do wanna put in a bunch of panel lines where I can and it makes sense just to take some of the wide open canvas out of this thing. And one of the things that I did notice with this model is with so many curves and fillets, um, I really work this covering down the best I could to prevent any wrinkles now or later. But you can see every ridge and imperfection in this thing. and um, 
by actually weathering it, we're going to take a lot of that stuff out because it's not going to have that perfect sheen that you can see against. And I can even see looking through the camera some of these things. So the weathering we're going to take right across panel lines and stuff right across our decals. And um, we're going to do a lot of it, which is simply a ruler. We have a uh, black graphite pen. We're going to use a white graphite pen for the nose. And... I'm going to use some light tack tape. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. And what we're going to work on first is I am gonna shoot this panel line from right underneath those rivets right here in the cowl. And we're gonna take that panel line all the way back to tail to the leading edge of the horizontal stab. So um, let's go ahead and get that laid out. All right, so I started by making, I'm going to shoot the panel line from reference marks to keep everything as symmetrical as I can. And if I need to make measurements, I'm actually going to use a veneer caliper for spacing to keep them right if I have to. So I made a small pencil mark there, and I made another one right there. And I'm going to throw you guys back up here so you can see what I do. Hopefully that works for everybody. And now I'm going to take a piece of tape and I'm going to just shoot myself a nice taunt line of tape from the bottom side of that pencil mark. And I want to make it taunt so that way it's not squiggly and try and lay it all in one fail swoop, just like that, all the way down. And now I'm gonna take my pencil, and with varying amount of pressure, you don't have to have it the same all the way across. I'm simply going to take this thing, and I'm gonna ride right down on the top of the edge of that tape. And if I slip and I fall off, that's completely cool because I'm going down over the tape, like there, slipped off coming off that sticker. Right, and then you can use extra pressure, you can use lighter pressure. We'll change it up. So, more and more, and less and less. Now, when I peel this tape off, let's see if we can get some more. I just want a little bit darker right over my sticker. So there's that panel line. And I'm gonna try and save this tape to some degree because otherwise you'll go through tape fairly fast. We don't, we don't wanna waste it. It's gotta preserve it. Now, now that that panel line is done, I'm gonna get myself some, again, really rough uh, Brillo. And we went over the whole model to begin with. And I'm gonna come over that panel line I'm going to Brillo that thing out. And this will just take and lighten some of it up. It'll darken some of it. Like that. And it also spreads the graphite on both sides. So I don't even necessarily need to brush it. Now from there that I have that panel line, I'm actually going to turn the plane a little bit so it's a little easier to see and work with and we're going to get two things so first is going to be our micro torch and you don't necessarily need this but it it does work well um, and a 256 rod and what i would normally do in most of these and i'll tell you why i do it differently on this one 
um, is I am just going to space and I'm going to use a ruler to space them out. I normally just use pressure. But what I found with this model is some of the sheeting is thin sheeting. And just by using pressure, I actually poke right through and I don't want to poke holes in this thing. So a little bit of heat will help you. I actually saw a guy that had a pretty neat idea on Facebook a long time ago. Um, he put his on a soldering iron so he can just keep it a temperature and he could push it that way. And that's, that's, that's a cool idea too. Um, so anyway, we're going to take our, our turbo torch here and we're going to turn that thing on. See if we can get you guys down where you can catch all this. And just so my spacing stays the same, so my rivets look good, I like to go every half inch. And all I'm going to do is simply take this and I'm just going to heat it just a little bit. And then with a little pressure, just push that thing into the wood. And you don't want to melt the covering. So I don't want this real hot. And I'm staying close to that hinge reference line that I made. We're just making an impression in the covering and the wood, and it's okay if some are lighter, some are darker. As far as pressure goes. And I haven't tried this technique. I don't know why. I haven't tried it in foamies. With just a little bit of heat. I guess I'm just completely worried about what's going to happen when you heat it. Okay, so I think you guys can get, let me shut this off, you can get the gist there. Now what I'm going to do is I take I'm going to pop you off the stand. I'm going to take you down here. If you can see that, see all this stuff? That comes from a, a graphite. I just use one of these, a construction pencil, because they're really thick. And I just literally grind that into the table. Just making a pile of graphite. Now, if you can see down through there, you can see the rivets that I made going down that panel line. So I'm going to take this rag and I'm going to scrub that in there now. And I'm going to transfer that. And then when I come down through here, we're going to wipe right down that panel line. And that'll give me the shading I'm desiring on both sides. But you see what it does to the rivets now? Look at that. Look how that makes that pop like that. Now, here's the other cool part. Get yourself some silver. And I'll show you a couple things we're going to do with this. Shake this up really good like this. We're going to open that up. And all I need is the cap. There. Take the same tool you were using because it's the same size. Just dab just in the cap. You can brush a little bit off and come back into your rivets. And see how that just left the edge of the rivet? And just do each rivet sporadically. So I'm going to skip some because they didn't have the paint peel. That one had a lot. A little bit. A little bit. Nothing there. Now I can even come into there and add decal. And rub a little bit in. And you guys can see that nice weathering effect. Now, when I do the rivets on the other side and we have multiple panel lines, that's going to pop like mad, even before we take an airbrush to any of this. So we got a lot of plane to do and a lot of diagram. Stick around for more tips and tricks. And uh, let's see how this bad boy turns out. Let's get to it.
All right, guys, it's time to add the accents on here. And we're gonna do it rolling into our rag and then just come right out of our rag. Right into that area. And again, heavy where the air would flow. And again, I really want to accent those rivets in there. I'm pretty happy with that. So um, let's go ahead and start dabbing in some silver. What do you say? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this coarse Brillo, tear it off, this steel wool. And I'm going to take my cap of aluminum paint and we're going to simulate stickers peeling. And you can do this also in the corners with a brush. Just take that, lightly dab it in there. You don't want too much. And then we're just going to randomly turn and move. with the aluminum and what it does is it simulates obviously the paint coming off we don't need to overdo it and you could also come in here on areas that you know are high traffic like that. We can just have some chips coming off the paint. I think that adds a lot. And we will do the leading edges here too. Um, as we get into doing the horizontal stabs. We'll do the same thing all along the edge and the top to really give that an, an accent as well. So then we can take, let me grab a brush. We can just take some of this stuff, get a fine brush. And I think it always looks better on the back side of the corners if you're going to do it. There. Like that and come in here We don't want to make it absolutely look perfect. But give a kind of a peeling paint look there. I think that looks really good. And you can even do here on the edge of your, your sticker if you want. Get some on the leading edge. There. So, um, I think that's enough for me for one night. I think we got a lot done. I'm super stoked with the way that looks. We still have the whole cowling and stuff to do. We'll do that in a chunk. I think we'll eat the fuselage. You know, it's like uh, the old saying goes, how do you need an elephant? One bite at a time. This is a big zero. So it's going to take us a little bit, but I'm, I'm super stoked with the way that looks. Love it. So I really hope you guys can see this because this this turns out perfect. And it's easy to overdo weathering. And, and just make it look really bad. So it, it's it's kind of hard, if you will, to put the brakes on and stop before it gets to that point. But you can see how we've darkened in all the panels there and then just some light airbrushing through there and then a little heavier through the decals just to accent those panel lines. And over here on the other side, we have all of the rivet work done as well. Again, we're just taking our pencil and scrubbing right there. 
and we just rub our rag and then as I want like here over this panel line just a little bit more accent this gives the fading in the panels that we're looking for so you can see how we get that effect where it's bright in here and that shade around the outside I think the light here um, really helps with that and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the airbrush and the airbrush is just going to accent over some of those pencil lines a little bit fade away the pencil lines so they don't look pencil lines like pencil lines and then uh, really give us that weathered look so uh, let's go ahead and again light airbrush effect here and uh, see how this turns out again we have to try and match this side to the other side let's so let's try not to overdo it Now we're going to go ahead and just like we did before on the other side, we're just going to dab in some of the rivet holes. Again, randomness, just to make them look a little bit different, each one. So some I'll use a lot of pressure on, some I use a little pressure on, a lot of pressure, a little pressure, skip some, get the edge of some.
And I think this gives it a really nice look for the weathering. And if you should just so happen to poke a hole in the covering, just go ahead and go over it with some of this aluminum stuff. And you can very, very easily make it look like a bullet hole. Just take a little bit of your silver paint and go off. In some different areas just like that and it really adds a nice little touch looks like a bullet hole so you're almost going off in a little kind of diagonal star pattern if you want so we're going to go ahead and uh go around got a lot of a lot of rivets to fill in let's get to it now we're going to go ahead and then just cut some of our corners and make it look like we got some peeling or some acid etching or paint fading in the corners there All right, guys, I hope you can see this. Um, I hope it shows up well on the camera, but we're done with the fuselage. Now it's time to get to the nose, but before we do, take a look at that. So um, some nice shading around the panels. We use the canopy line here as we installed all of our rivets going down through. The thing will look definitely different for sure in the daytime as we incorporated some of our you know, kind of oxidized panel corners there. We shaded a little darker going down through the insignias, if you will. And then we used more of that aluminum splatter to replicate peeling. But I think it looks pretty beat, not too overdone. Very happy with the way it looked out. I mean, it was a pretty spotless warbird before. I can't wait to get the wing done and the nose done so we could take this outside and really get a good look at the whole thing as to uh complete package but anyway it's time to get off into the nose we started to do a little bit here on this side i'm going to pull the spinner off to make the whole thing easier to do but what we're going to do is just use some fine grit this is 400 sandpaper and along the edges going backwards anywhere that's an edge like this that we can rough up a little bit we just go ahead and we take the 400 grit to expose what's underneath the paint just to get some of that bleeding just like that and that white will almost just look in itself just like the aluminum underneath so we really don't need to do a whole lot there with aluminum paint just exposing that so you'll see how we do that and then down in the inside you can just roll it and as we start to come up out of there like that so we're going to do that all the way around um, we're going to come over any of these ledges and ridges. We're going to do the same thing coming inside of these exhaust vents out the back with our 400 and just rough those up over the top like that. And then we are going to take our fine uh, steel wool and that's what we're going to use and take the sheen off of everything here. So then we don't, it's not gouging the paint. It just looks kind of weather beaten this way like that if you will and i'm going to clear the whole plane with a matte clear when i'm done so i'm going to take the cowling off and then that way we're just going to clear this i'm actually going to leave this this nice doled out look like this and we want to go front to back so that way all of those edges get worn just as they would with airflow we're going to use some of our aluminum dip with the steel wool around the edges here where the air would be rolling over really taking some of that paint off and uh 
we're going to make sure that we fade all the edges of any of those objects as well. So let's uh, let's pop this off, and you can see we kind of started on it there. Let's go ahead and pop this off and get to working on the cowl and try and get this fuselage complete. <laughs> this makes me sad. I'm gonna take this nice falcon prop. And we're going to weather it and make it look rough. Here we go. Time to shake it up a little bit. Now we're not going to use the black anymore. We're gonna use the pearled aluminum. And this is what I'm going to use to accent the pieces of the cowl, as well as I am going to go over the leading edge of like our horizontal and vertical stabs just to give a even slighter worn look there. So let's get to uh, mixing up some more airbrush.
All right, guys, we're outside with this weathered up zero. One of the fears of mine is always overdoing the weathering. And when you're downstairs in the layer in the house, the LED lighting is a little bit different than what it is outside. So if I needed to, I wanted to take this thing outside. If I needed to, I wanted to be able to have the ability to sand that stuff down a little bit to take some of the flare off. But I think we're at a, uh, a really nice balance right here. And after I clear all of that stuff, it'll soak in that a little bit and fade it even a little bit more. We've removed the cowl to get the clear coat all the way up into here. But one of the reasons uh, I wanna clear this thing is because I used a lot of that graphite and that chalk. And if it gets wet from grass, dew, whatever, it's gonna run and it looks very unsightly. I've even seen some fingerprints or some glue that you couldn't see to the naked eye until you put chalk on it and you know, the stuff kind of popped. So uh, anyway, what we're going to use to clear this stuff is going to just simply be a, a Krylon Cover Max Clear, and I'm using flat. And the nice part about this stuff, it dries fairly quickly, but um, you know, is going to be able to protect my finish. So let's uh, let's get into doing some painting. What do you say? Let's get going, round two. Now we've gone ahead and masked off all of our hinge points on the bottom of the plane. Let's go ahead and get the spraying. Let's give that time to dry. We'll be right back. Last coat, guys, and then it's time to get this thing ready for the air. Let's get to it.
And there you have it, guys. That's going to wrap up this Seagull Models Giant Scale Zero that I picked up over at Gator RC. I can't wait to get this thing to the field and maiden it. The build, although it took a while, was super cool, super easy, super straightforward. It would have been done a lot sooner had I not added all the details to it that I wanted to do. So with that being said, if you're interested in a Balsa Arf, any line, warbirds, biplanes, you name it, I want you to head on over to Gator RC and give them a check out there, www.gator-rc.com. Um, the rest of the information on the build you'll find in my links there. Very few issues, and that's the great thing about Balsa. We can customize it easily. We can make it our own. So many limitless possibilities here if you really wanted to explore, or you can just throw them together and go fly them, whatever you want to do. But with that being said, um, it's Brendan here at Just Plain Crazy. If you liked it, like it. Uh, give me a thumbs up for sure. It helps the channel. If you didn't like it, make sure you smash the thumbs down button twice for me. Like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification, select all so you're made aware of all of my content. Otherwise, I wish you guys happy flights. Peace out.